I'm beach fishing in Sydney with my good mate Loza. Hi, my name's Roger Osborne. In today's video, Loza and I have come down to the beach. We're always pumped, aren't we, Laurie? Usually. <laughs> We're pretty always psyched up for a fish. It's very rare conditions today, but always optimistic. In this video, I'm going to teach you exactly what we're doing and explain what we're thinking, and hopefully we catch some great fish. Make sure that you like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, and we'll get started. Hey, Loz. That's it. Last one is a rotten egg. That's it. <laughs> Loz and I, first of all, we're going to go hunting for some beach worms. It's actually, wow, it's an hour and a half after low tide, Laurie. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, that's our first thing. We've got some lovely flat sand up the beach. We're going to go for a walk, pull a few worms, uh, and then we're going to fish in this lovely gutter, which is just out in front of us as the tide comes in further. So Mate, let's, head, let's head up the beach, Yeah, Loss. yeah, that's a cracker. That's a great idea. See that sandbar? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have three casts on that, and it'll be right with you. Oh, really? <laughs> All right, OK. Am I getting a bite on this rod? What's going on? What's Laurie doing? He wants to chuck his soft plastic out there. I can't stop him, of course. <laughs> we need to get the worms before the tide comes in too much. Otherwise, it'll get harder. What's going on there? They're not filming. <laughs> Look at that. I lost my bait. How's that? There's fish out there. I just checked my line out. It's pretty shallow water, but man, I've got to bite straight away. Look, the whole worm bait's gone. I don't know what that was, but that's, uh, that's certainly encouraging because in these conditions you think, are you going to catch anything at all? But wow, awesome. I taught my friend Laurie how to catch beach worms a number of years ago, and he's actually really good at it now. He uses pliers, that's his preferred method, but he just whips them out super quick with the pliers. Now, Laurie had some worms frozen in his freezer that were salted down, so we brought some of those frozen worms down with us. So that's why I've just chucked a line out with some frozen worm on it. We figure we may as well leave that out there while we're beach worming, and we may catch a fish. Yeah, we may, a fish may hook itself while we're down catching some worms. So that's why I've got that line out there at the moment. And Laurie's having a quick flick with the plastic. I've also brought some soft plastics down as well, because later, we're going to toss out some baits, leave our baits as set lines, and then we're going to just play around with our soft plastics while we've got our baits out in the water. So I think Laurie's, I think he's nearly had his three casts. <laughs> well, there's a sandbar just out there. You may be able to see it right where that wave is. I landed on the sandbar. Slowly jig it off the edge. As you can see, very short, sharp jabs. I don't want to break their necks. <laughs> but that's the third cast. I thought I had a hit on the first cast, but there you go, that was something. I thought something just grabbed it just then. However, We've got to get some worms, so I'm off with Roger. My feet are really cold. <laughs> All right, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Where are you? Uh, this is quite a sharp little edge here. I think we're probably better off going up there. What do you reckon? Yeah, the one that I looked at was small as well. Oh, there are right. That's you a better you one. You want to go that one? That's a better one. You want to take him? I'll have a go. He's certainly bait big enough to um, big enough to use for bait. I think you're going to get a break now, Laurie. Oh, -ho! two baits. So you, um, Laurie uses pliers to catch worms, but you're very good at it, Laurie. You just whack them out really quick. That's awesome. Well, that's good. <laughs> oh, Laurie, look, here's one here. It's my yeah, turn. That. It's my turn. All right, there you go. I'll just wait for a little break. Hopefully he comes up and plays ball. What are you thought about it? Come on, come on. 
It's another one down there, as you saw. Is there? Just need a wave for this guy. Like this wave might do it. It's another way of telling him to come on. Are you going to come up or what? There he is. He's actually not wanting to come out of the sand. Yeah, he's probably See him if he's doing yeah. that? Yeah. He's a mully grubber. He's one of those, um, sometimes worms can be really fussy, who knows why. I'll see if I can get a bit more of a wash going, it might be better. Oh, he's finally sticking his head up. Good boy. He's a decent worm, actually. Oh! <laughs> I had him in my fingers, but I should have held on to him a little bit tighter. Do you know what you're doing? <laughs> I'm learning, Loz. He was actually quite a solid, thick worm, and I was a little bit uh, excited. Grabbed him too quickly. <laughs> <laughs> There's one here. I'm battling the waves at the moment. OK. Maybe now. Hey, yo! <laughs> Here's a good one. Getting wet. That wave hit me. I really didn't have much time to grab that guy. The wave hit me pretty quick, but fortunately I had a hold of this one and I learned my lesson from that last one. What's that, Laurie? It's right on the crash line. Yeah, it's a, oh, here comes a wave. Oh! No. Missed him. It would appear that I don't know what I'm doing. There's a couple here, Laurie. Battling the waves here. I've got another one for you, Laurie. <laughs> There's one right there. OK. Hey, Rog, am I waiting for the water or the tide? <laughs> well, it's an exercise in patience, Laurie. Here comes a wave. OK, here we go. Let's do this. Dinner bell's over. He's not hungry. Ah, oh, there he is. Mm. Missed by that much. Nice. I dropped my pilchards. That's a pretty solid worm. It's really what you'd call a king worm, this worm. Beautiful bait worm. So while there's not heaps here, there's certainly some good quality worms in this spot. I had to wait for about 10 waves then because he didn't want to stick his head up. Oh, awesome. <laughs> There's another one. Woo! <laughs> two out of two. Yep. Ah. <laughs> Where'd he go? I nearly had him, man. You did have him. You disturbed him. Where's that crab gone? Oh, he straight back under, I'd say. Rog, there's your crab. Ah. Roger. No, I've got this one. Look, there's two. Look. Yeah, there's another one the same size just Ooh. there. He nearly bit me with his nipper before when I went to grab him. These guys have been attracted by the fish. And there's another crab just down there in the channel. But these are amazing baits, so I'm going to keep this crab. And I really should try and catch that other one. Believe it or not, this is actually a red crab. And if you're a rock fisherman, you know what I mean by a red crab. They are the best. His brother's bigger. His brother's bigger? OK. There he is. He's just hanging on the sand. He can smell all this. Yeah. OK, so my method, <laughs> my method's not very um, graceful. I put my foot on the crab. Oh, 
Oh, he's trying to bite my finger. Whoa. I'm, I've got one finger underneath him because I don't have a very good grip on the rest of him. But I'm amazed how we're in the middle of the beach Whew. and these guys have been attracted to the pilchards that we're waving around, undoubtedly, because they're just hanging right where we are. Hey, Laurie, that's unusual to see that in the middle of the beach. They're not, yeah. sand, they're not sand crabs. I've noticed that the, the worms are slowed down and the crabs haven't. I must have chilli on my bait. They're not right. coming up. <laughs> well, mine, same thing's happening with mine. It's just that uh, this is a ready. It's one of the long oh, I can ones. See it. I can see it moving there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need water, though. Yeah. This is a different type of worm. It's what we call reddies, or they're kind of like an albino worm. But they grow very long. I don't think this one's all that long. Yeah, he's not all that long. Oh, just a moderate size. Oh, he's, your one's not playing ball, Laurie. Doesn't want to. Laurie, I reckon you can rarely worm up there where that flat sand is. Oh, well, if that's the case. So I think there could be some monster worms up there. That's where we should be. So let's just go straight up there. OK. All right. See that? That's, that's got that green stringy weed growing on it? Yes. So there's obviously... Ludrick would come in and hang on that. They would. Hey, Bruce, Bruce. Oh, another crab. I'm going to take this guy. Manna from heaven. <laughs> He's digging in. That's crab number three, fantastic. How's it go? Mate, 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 mate. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Very good, Loz, you spotted that. Wow. Yeah, I reckon that could be pretty epic up there. I've never wormed there before. Look how flat it is, I've never oh, seen it this flat. And obviously you can see where the high tide mark is, it's quite a ways up. Hey, look at this, Loz. What are they doing? One. Is he alive? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, he's alive. Mate, it looks like there's one down here, a big one down here on the oh, beach. Oh, awesome. These crabs are a gift, Laurie. Yeah, he's, al he's away, he's alive, yeah. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we do like to be beside the seaside. <laughs> Crazy things. What's he doing? Sunbaking. I know. I'm trying to grab him. Let's give him a little rinse. Well, I'm not sticking my fingers in your bucket to get worms. These crabs are an absolute gift. You know, almost never see like that. But I may not use these crabs right now, but I'm going to convert these crabs into groper. And I'm gladly receiving them. OK, Loz, we've got to keep going. Unless you want to try out on one of these. Oh, no, I reckon we've got to go up there. It's better up there. I just there. thought I might see a Jurassic worm in the shallows there. How many do we need? Well, we've probably got, almost got enough for bait. Five or ten? Yeah. No more. There's a limit on these. Yeah, the bag limit's 20 per person, hey? Yeah, we don't need hey, that look, many. Hey, look, two down there, look. There's two crackers just here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. want to get them? Oh, one there and one there. Oh, they're big ones. OK. One here, one there. Let's try this one first. See how we fare with this fella. Yeah, he stuck his head up. Waves come in. Keep him interested. Come on, water, disperse. All right, little sideways. May have a chance now. Send some dust across the face of him. There he is there. All right, come on. Oh, there's one here and there's one here. We'll go for this one first. Okay, he's got it. Lifting, grab. 
There he is. Whoa. Thank you, Mother, for the rabbits. <laughs> oh, someone else uses that wine. I can't use that. <laughs> Let's try this one. It's important to wash the plies in the water to make sure there's no sand on the joint so it doesn't interfere with the way they close. It's one thing I've learned over the years. It helps. All right, we'll have a chance now once this water disperses. He's still there, I can see him. Uh, here we go. Too much water. Hold back the tide. Bring him up. There he is. Huh. Stocky but short. Rog, I think we've got enough. I think between us, Laurie, we don't need a lot. No. Well, it depends on how many bites we get. Yeah, I guess, I mean, look, you know, and we, we want to be able to just relax and fish for as long as we want. I don't mind spending a few more minutes doing this, Laurie, because it's only early in the afternoon. Yeah. Middle of winter. Yeah, look at this. Middle of winter. Warm as. And we haven't even really started fishing yet. <laughs> Whoa, look at that. Nice one. <laughs> nice. Look at that, Loz. Lose your worms. He's a good one. That's a beast. I'll put him on my hand. Look at that guy. Oops, he's going off the edge. That's a very wriggly worm. He's a good one. It's like a snake. Yay. Hey, Los, what do you reckon? Is, is beach worming good fun or what? It's very addictive. It's good fun. It's hard to stop. <laughs> so, when are we starting to fish? Well, I reckon we should start to fish, but you know, like, <laughs> how, this is so enjoyable, mate. This is, this is Sydney's northern beaches. Fantastic. Yeah, whether you're catching worms or catching fish or catching crabs or it's all good fun. So beautiful today. It's just great to be out. So now I've got a worm and crab combo in my bait bucket. I'll let you have a little look. There's worms underneath the crabs, but it's a combination of worms and crabs. Yeah, we've done well. We've got oh, probably 15 worms between us. Yeah, and they're all decent ones. Yeah, they're all. They're all pretty good. I think we've got more than enough. Yeah, I think so. Let's get a line in the water. Alrighty. Okay. okay, so now we'll switch from bait catching mode into um, just having some fun fishing. But it looks, looks promising. So we can mush these up for burley in that gutter, lorry. Yep, all right. Just get a little bit of that scent going out there. And if I see any more crabs around here, I'm gonna grab them. Here's a rag I prepared earlier. You wanna wipe your hands? Sure, mate. It's good to blow your nose on. I thought I had my first cast off that gutter, yeah. off the sandbar into the gutter. Mm -hmm. I thought something pulled it and then let it go. That's what I thought. But With that soft plastic. Yeah, but I could have been just hitting a bit of a lump in the sand and got stuck, maybe, I don't know. Well, what do you think? We both put a bait out. Yep. And then we can have a flick with the plastics while, while we've got a bait out. Or... Sounds like a plan. You know, I would think, Laurie, as the tide fills up, We've got a nice little bit of white water from these little waves here. There's going to be fish in these troughs coming yep. in to feed. So I think it's a really good tide right now. That's definitely got deeper since we started worming. Oh, definitely, yeah. I think this is just about one of the only beaches that has any waves on it. Okay. Dinner is served. Dinner is served. Uh, thank you, waiter. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> right, so I'm going to uh, just put this snap swivel on this. That's a huge lead for this. What pound line are you using? Oh, I've line. actually got 20 pound line on the main oh, line. Yeah, 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 do that. Okay, so I put just put on a worm. I'll just show you, show you the method. That's what I've done. There it is. It's about maybe what three inches of worm, three and a half, four inches of worm. Size number four hook, bait holder. 
10 pound fluorocarbon leader. About a foot and a half. One ball sinker. Very simple. And I'm going to put it over there in the gutter. There it is. Meanwhile, we're entertained. Oh, there's a the bite. Okay, I'm on. All right, I've caught something. A winter whiting. It's a winter whiting. Hey, Laurie. They reckon that you can't get whiting in winter. Middle of winter, <laughs> whiting on worms. Look at that. Go figure. And it is 25 past two in the afternoon. How good's that, Laurie? That might have been what was biting before, yeah. maybe. Did you, were you just fishing off the edge there? In the gutter. Didn't yeah. even, it didn't even get to the edge. Should we wow. keep it or let it go? Yeah, keep him, mate. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mate, he's too good, mate. They're too delicious not to eat. That's about not to eat. 28 centimetres. Yeah, I reckon he'd be... 27, 28? 10, 20. He'd be legal, yeah, for sure. Wow. OK. Beautiful. That's one. <laughs> As you can see, it worked. So I'm not going to change a thing. I'm going to do the same thing again and see if it works the second time. So we thread that back on there. Go down the middle of the worm. Possibly, I need some sand. Sometimes it's good to just put a bit of sand on there so that you can get a better grip. You won't end up putting the hook in your finger. So, thread that there, go through the side, spin the hook around, back through the body, right through, right through, like that. And there it is. Okay, try again. So we put that. I'm going to move my bait over to the, near the sandbar and drag it off the edge of the sandbar because that's where I got the bite last time. Okay, winding in. There's a little bit of a current. It drags down from left to right. That still looks healthy. So over there we go. Over there, bang, beautiful, right on the edge. I know need to wind it, that is in, in the sweet spot straight away. Let's see if it proves me right. It's hoping. So what's happening, buddy? Well, there's bites. You can see on the edge. Yeah, yeah. A couple of metres before the edge, bang, let it sit right there. It'll drift down. On this side of the edge? Yes, it'll drift down. And you should get some bites on the way. I've had two casts, two lots of bites. OK. You can see where Laurie and I are fishing. There's a shallow sandbar just here. And there's just a, a, a thin finger of deeper water here. It basically just goes up into a corner just there. You've got the shallow sandbar. The waves are washing across the sandbar and just into this little trough. So that's where Laurie's casting. He's casting basically on the edge where the shallow water drops into the trough along there, and that's where he's getting his bites. Looks fantastic. And as the tide comes in, the water depth will increase, and I expect that fish will come in this lovely pathway here, and they'll come into this corner to feed, so that's gonna be a really good spot as the sun gets a little bit lower, as the tide comes in. High tide this afternoon is 6 p.m., which is pretty much right on dark. It's dark about quarter to six. So I have, I'm going to toss a line out now. I'm going to join Laurie. And i um, just going to crumb this worm. Just put a bit of sand on that worm, make it a little bit easier to grab. Today when I was planning to go fishing with Laurie, I looked at the um, weather, weather report. I use a 
a thing called weather zone and they have a marine and tide section when you put in a particular location and I always look at the wave graph and the wave graph normally has like it'll tell you if it's three feet two feet five feet it'll give you a graph of the height of the waves when I looked at the wave graph today I saw something I, I don't even know if I've seen it before for the wave height it said zero I thought man I've never seen that in fact it said zero for the next two days like like I thought what that it was just nothing on the graph I went to another beach not this one and that's what it was like the waves were just lapping on the shore not a wave anywhere but when I looked at this beach here it had some really nice shallow sandbars I actually couldn't believe the features on the beach considering the fact that there's virtually no waves anywhere else there are a few little waves here and also it had some lovely spots that looked good for beach worming so I just thought man this just ticks all the boxes it looks great for beach worming and also it's got some good features on the beach and as it turned out some really nice quality worms to catch and um, Laurie in his first serious cast caught a, caught a whiting and has had some other bites. Right in the gutter, just on the edge of just the sand. Just in that little gutter there. I can draw a diagram in the sand and show you exactly what I think is happening in that All gutter. Alright, why don't you do that Loz? Alright, can you hold that for a second? Yeah, okay. Just quickly. Now this is my interpretation of what's happening. That's the top of the water. Here's the little sandbar. That's the gutter. So this is all water. The water is going that way. It's rolling off the top here and churning. Churning up, taking all the top of the sand and all of the food morsels into the gutter. My interpretation is that the fish are swimming up here and waiting just here, waiting for things to roll off and they're eating it. We're standing over here throwing into the gutter. So we throw up here and drag down and bang, 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 bang. That's basically what's happening. So the water's coming this way across the top of the sandbar, down into the deeper part, slows down, bringing all of the morsels with it. And the fish are swimming up here and just waiting there, just waiting for things to wash off the top. And that's happening just over here. You can see that dark water line. And then on the other side, you see the sandbar. And you know what? You know what, Laurie? Even though there's people surfing here, there's guys on surfboards, people out here having fun, some guys catching waves right where our lines are. It's not stopping the fish from biting. Hey. Well, I got one. Yeah, yeah. Your turn. All right. Now, I'm, I'm actually cheating, Laurie. Oh, uh, you got two hooks. I've got two baits, and Laurie's only got one. <laughs> so, if I, catch, if I catch more fish, really, I'm cheating. That's Anyways, right. we'll give it a go. on the edge of the gutter. That's about right in the zone, isn't it, Laurie? Yeah, pretty much. Just off the edge. Yeah, a couple of metres off the edge. Only about one or two metres of where that... Well, that's where I was. Now, I've also got a different sinker to you. You'll hold still. Yeah, you've got a ball sinker, so you're going to... Yeah, I'm going to drift away. You're going to roll a little bit, which can be advantageous because you'll cover a bit of ground. Whereas I've got a... Um, a star sinker which is really going to hold the bottom a little bit more so we'll see we'll see how that works i mean you might get more bites than me we'll just see what happens well in theory you've got you've got a scent trail staying still but drifting down with the current and you're staying still so they'll have to swim up past through it to get to it whereas they'll have to chase mine there's a little bit of a wash there yeah i am actually just drifting a fraction with it you reckon yeah, I have moved, I felt my sinker move a little bit. Yeah, yeah. There is a current. I think as the tide fills in a little bit more, it's you a nice, nice little spot. Yeah, you never know. I might have caught the only whiting there. <laughs> we'll soon know. I also, also don't mind over there, Laurie. See that edge off on that sandbar there? On this there? side, yeah. Because you've got a little drop off over there as well. Yeah, that's pulling out that way. Yeah, where the waves are breaking on that sandbar there, Yep. Just to the left of it, in the, on the edge of this, because this is quite a big open gutter going out to okay, sea. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, I've already got that one, so I'm going to go over here. <laughs> All right, uh, you wanna have, you're going to have a flick over there. 
<laughs> oh, I think it looks good over there. <laughs> I'm actually fishing with a 12 foot beach rod. It's kind of like, I'd call it light to medium. That's the actual rod I'm using. Oh, hang on, I'm getting a bite. Hang on. Yeah, had a proper bite. Oh well. Got him. Got him, Loz. Got one. Oh, very good. Oh, yeah. I, my line had actually drifted over into the middle of the gutter. Okay. Hey, there's some bait fish in the water, Laurie. I can see them jumping out of the water. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going back to the middle then. Oh, that's a better one. Hey, Laurie, look at this. Look that's at that. That's much better. That's a lovely whiting. Look at that. What a cracking whiting. Oh my goodness. What a stunning fish. That's a good size whiting. That's right? an absolutely beautiful whiting. Oh my. We know all about whiting, don't we, Laurie? Oh yeah. The side of his gills here is quite sharp. You can see where it's jabbed my thumb. And you can see some of my blood on his gill, actually. Oh well. It's one of the things that happens when you're fishing. Yeah, whose fault was that? Mine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Laurie, what do you reckon about that? That's a cracker. Mate, there's white in here. Yeah, who would have thought? Don't tell everybody, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you look at him. What? I thought he did. It's called a whitey. Have you ever heard of that before? No. See, isn't, he, isn't, he, isn't he beautiful? Can I touch it? Yeah, 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 you can touch him. He won't hurt you. Yeah, maybe touch him over here. Look, he's moving because he's alive. See, so he won't hurt you, though. <laughs> oh, I dropped him. No, oh, he's alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you try. You can try. Pick him up in the middle like that. Hold strong. Good job. What are these holes here for? Which ones? These. There? That's just where he, he breathes, that's his gills in there. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna eat him for dinner. Oh. <laughs> Baiting up again. Two hooks should always win hands down against one, but I'll just increase the size of the bait. We'll see what happens. Hello, it's got one. <laughs> Oh, it looks pretty good, Strong. Laurie. That looks, that's got weight in it, hasn't it? Look at the little bait fish jump. Mate, this, this is going to be amazing later. Oh, Brim, look at that. Oh, Laurie. Is, is it the same type? No, it's a different type. Nothing like a face full of sand. Silver brim. Well, there you go. He's out there as well. Okay, so that's that's a decent fish. All right. We'll um, get him off the hook, put him in the bag, and try again. Well, hang on. I'm getting a bite. Hang on. What's going on? Had a solid bite then. I'm just waiting for the fish to actually go on with it. I just had a bite, Loz. But I'm waiting for him to finish it off. You had a bite? You had a bite, went bang, 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 and then I was waiting to kind of, but stopped. You want another one? <laughs> this, is, this is just awesome. Yeah, you know mate, the, they're there. You know what, the water's crystal clear, but there's fish there. And when I was pulling my whiting in all these little bait fish... Oh, that's exactly what happened when I put this in. This is the sort of spot a Jewy would swim into here. Oh, yeah. Come well, in here. These little silver things like that, they'll just dive yeah, out yeah, of the yeah, water yeah. when I was bringing my, that brim in. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go to the left of you. All right. I'm about straight out yeah, there, right so out. you can go over there. You've drifted from over there. Yeah. So you've actually had a bite over there. Yeah, look, look where my line is. Yeah, yeah. Out towards the surface. That's where I got the hit. That's where I've just chucked I've just chucked that line along that edge. Yep. So I'm to your right. I'm over just on the edge of that okay. drop-off in there. So okay. I'll see if I get a bite over there. 
I probably lost my bait, so I'll rig up again, but I'm, or bait up again, but I think rather than throw over there and let it drift across, I'm going to throw in the middle and let it drift yeah. over. See, when I got that winding before, yep. mine drifted sort of over into that spot as well. So yeah. there, it's yeah, interesting, so there, over there. That's where they should be. Yeah. Okay. I might have to check your bait. I'll do that. <laughs> That's exactly what I'll do. Yeah, he's got me for sure. I'd like to give a big shout out and a thank you to all of my subscribers and especially those of you who've been with me from the beginning. It's amazing that I'm just about to hit 50,000 subscribers, which yeah, would have seemed impossible a little while ago. And um, I'm really enjoying teaching people. I get a lot of satisfaction out of helping people and I'm um, really enjoying doing the video. So I intend to continue doing it um, and helping people. So. If you haven't actually subscribed yet, please do. And um, yeah, so it's been an awesome journey. I'm looking forward to many, many more great sessions, lots more teaching. Now, this afternoon I'm using what I'd call like a medium light beach fishing rod. This is the actual rod that I'm using. It's 12 foot long. I really like it. I love that length. You know, I just like, and it's actually very good for casting. It's got a nice whippy action. The reel I have is spooled with 20 pound monofilament line. I've got a two hook rig today. My, the leaders for my rig are actually, they're 10 pound fluoro. So my main line's 20 and the leaders are only 10 pound. I'm doing that just because there's a few whiting here and I, I might get more bites using the lighter, lighter fluoro. Otherwise, I'd be happy to fish 20 pound all the way through. Okay, what have we got here? You got a fish? I think this is a little whiting. Feels small. <laughs> yep, he's going back to mama. Hey, back, I got one. Roger's on as well. I'm going to put this one back. Go film Roger. Okay, I've got a fish over here. Awesome. What have we got? I can actually see quite a few bait fish in the water, which is always exciting to see. Alrighty, it's another whiting. Hey, Laurie. Another whiting. This is the, um, the fourth whiting that we've landed. Laurie and I've got two each now. So there's obviously plenty out there in, that little, in this little gutter. I think this guy, probably just right on legal size. So I think I'll let him go. Worms are such an amazing bait and so many different fish love them. I know I use them a lot it's very hard not to use fresh beach worms because they really do produce fish nearly all the time. You know, I think, honestly, probably every time I go fishing with fish, with worms, I catch fish. If not every time, nine times out of 10. So they certainly come up with the goods. You see, I don't just catch salmon. <laughs> Getting plenty of whiting. Actually, I'm amazed because this is July and there's, we're getting quite a good whiting bait. So it's fantastic. You can still catch them in winter. Laurie, I caught that other whiting along that edge, so that they must be right through here. I'd say they I are. reckon. Because we've we've had bites here, we've had bites there. Yes. I think we're in the in the sweet spot. Yeah. Okay, so I will cast over there okay. on your left. Okay. My usual response was, in the water. In the water, that's right. <laughs> it's about, a, about the sweet spot, hey? That should be good. Should be good. Let's wait for a bit more action. You know, um, I've got a top hook, and then I've got a hook down under the sinker like you have. I've got both of the whiting that I've caught on the top hook 
Yeah, there you go. So they're swimming midstream, mid column, not down the bottom. Mm. Well, you've been getting plenty of bites as well. Yeah. That's a nice rod, Shimano what? This is a, a Mycuro 2. Mycuro 2, Shimano. It's 12 foot. I really like it, Mike. Oh, it's a beauty. I can tell by the action on it. It's, it's fantastic. Two piece? Four piece. Oh, what? <laughs> That's like a travel rod. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, incredible. Yeah. The action on it's really good. I know, it's awesome. I really like it. Wow. And I've actually got 20 pound line on this reel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. just gone, wow. this is kind of like my medium outfit. Yes, yes, yes. I can get great distance with casting on it, although it looks like I've already used a bit of line on it, doesn't it? I can it? see you servicing your own reel still. <laughs> you know me, Laurie. <laughs> How old is that one? Uh, I've been using it for a couple of months. Shimano? Yeah. SW6000. This is 35 years old. That's a no. couple of months old. Is that 35 years old? Yeah, really? mate. It's, wow. I don't even know what brand it is, but... You're very... It almost looks as shiny as yours. <laughs> Mine just gets a lot of use, Laurie. <laughs> yeah. I've been fishing... Uh, <laughs> I've been fishing all through winter. Yes. Just haven't stopped. And you know what? It's been, and I've just been having a great time fishing off the beach. Yeah, now this is interesting. See that boat that just pulled up out there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's gone to that, that orange oh, buoy. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Yes, well, I wonder what's going on that. Maybe he's a pro fisherman. Oh. You now, Laurie, I haven't had any bites there. I've drifted a little bit to the right. Yep. See that? There's another little trough in there. See that? We've got yeah. that sandbar there with that other little trough. Yeah, which way is the water pulling, though? It's... Well, that sandbar there, the water's washing a bit to towards you and me. So essentially these waves are washing that way, those waves are washing, they're both coming into the centre here. Yep. But I'm not yep. exactly sure which way that, but that, that's yeah, good water as well. Yeah, it's interesting, yeah it is. It it's is it's actually really good water. The sweet spot seems to be smack in the middle, this is the out bigger, of it. Yeah, this is the bigger, deeper gutter. So I'm going to wait and see how I get the bites, otherwise I'm going to toss it out further along that edge. Yep, yep, good plan. As I did. He's picked that, that buoy up, that guy. It's in shark cap. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And there's well. another one over there, see? Go yes, on. he's heading straight for it. I might have some sort of trap. Alright, well I'm still baited up, so I'm going to go on your other side and yeah. go back out. So you might have noticed I cast then and it didn't, it didn't go out anywhere near far enough and I thought why was that? So I bring it in and this is the reason. It's tangled. So, we'll sort that out. Sometimes it's easier to cut everything, but in this case it looks like a pretty simple tangle. I hey, think. hey Laurie. Yeah, mate. I'm not quite sure, but I can see a bit of a ruffle in the water over along the edge of this bank. It could be a school of fish over there. Just here, along the edge of where it drops off, it's a little bit... Yeah, yeah, where it's turned up. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to walk over. It could be a school of fish. Okay, so here we go. Which way are we going here? That way. Hopefully. Here we go. Now, I'll show you a little trick. I don't know if you can see it, but there, the line... It's all twisted up. I'll show you how to get rid of that. You hold that tight. All gone. Look at that. Voila. So far, Laurie and I have caught five fish in a relatively short period of time. We've got four whiting and a brim. But I've just walked about 50 or 60 metres down the beach because there's a lovely little trough here. Nice little bit of sand being stirred up. And I think it's worth a cast in there. I would expect that you'd think you'd catch whiting in there as well. So just on the right hand side of where this white water is, I'm just going to flick a bait out there. Because it just looks fishy. Yeah, that's about where I wanted to land. So I'm just going to wait here for a couple of minutes and see if I get a bite. 
you don't know until you try. And if not, I had a bite on my last cast fishing beside Laurie. So if I don't get any bites here, in five minutes or so, I'll go back over there. This is very enjoyable for a winter's day. So I've been fishing with bait for a little while. I'm going to just hold this for a few more minutes. I'm going to go over to where we're set up, make sure I've got some bait, chuck this out, put it in the rod holder, and then I'm going to start fishing along the edge here with some soft plastics. Because I think it looks like it's quite possible you could get some fish here. So, uh, And I enjoy doing that. So I'm going to switch over to the plastics in probably about five minutes. I think I've got something really small, I'm not sure. I definitely had a bite. No, no fish, but I, um, yeah, I had a bite, I missed it. I had a bite and I missed it. And I could have chucked it out again, but I'm actually gonna have a play with plastics. So my plan is to S chuck set this. Set it up, yeah. I'm gonna chuck this out on that edge over there. Set it up. Leave it, chuck it out and leave it there, and then I'm just gonna go and put a plastic on it. I'm gonna start in that little gutter and flick around. Cause it'd be good if I caught something on the plastic. Like that? I'm just gonna put it in there. Maybe I should move that up a bit higher because the water's getting up here. <laughs> it was very, <laughs> it was very close to that surfer, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, five meters away. <laughs> he might have thought it was a jumping fish. I wasn't trying to hit him. No, but there's a good chance he'll find it. I was mindful of where he was, but I thought, oh. No, he won't find it. He's going the other way now. OK, Lord, so if anything takes this, you're welcome to switch over. OK. Now I've got three hooks in the water. I think I'll choose this one. Oh, it's got a bit of, look at that. It's got the plastic, it's got a bit of real worm on the packet. <laughs> Bit of my beach worm that I caught. Get off there. That's a fish. Right. Okay, I'll come coming over, mate. It's on. He's on. It's on. I that's got a, it. That's Track a, it. That's got a it. set line. This is a team effort. Yeah, I hooked it. You hooked it. You did. Tag team. Whew. What is it, Loz? Is it a brim or a whiting? Roger, I bet it's a fish. <laughs> Probably another whiting. Yeah. Oh, brim. Okay. Another nice brim to add to the tally. If something's had a bite of him, you can see that something's, when he was younger, has taken a bite out of the top of him. There you go, he's like that worm. Beautiful. I'll whack it out again, Laurie. I was almost rigged up with those plastics, but we got this. Haven't even caught one salmon. What's going on with that? That could be a blessing. <laughs> Although I have caught salmon. I've caught salmon in this very spot before. <laughs> so we've landed six fish so far. Yeah. It's all right. The sun is just about to disappear behind the hill. Although there's quite a big, big hill behind us so that we'll lose the sun pretty yeah, early. Yeah, that's OK. It's only, um, well, 25 to 4. High tide at 6. 
Okay, you're back on duty, Laurie. Ah, uh, <laughs> multitasking. Yeah. Did you just see it go? Like oh that, yeah, it started and I grabbed it and yanked it. Struck at it. Awesome. Fortunately, it hooked up. So, Laurie, I'm switching over to plastics. Ah, that's, yeah. That's one of the colours that you like, isn't it? It is. That's kind of like that watermelon watermelon colour. What I've done is I've got a slightly heavier jig head. This is a quarter ounce. Okay. Like, I would, you wouldn't use one that big in the lake. No, but definitely good for surf. Yeah, so it's not like a mega heavy jig head. Yep. So it's a quarter, quarter ounce jig head. That's actually on a, only a 1 0 hook. Right, -o. it's it a heavy good. hook. Yeah. Yeah, better for the surf. And you can see the hook's coming out kind of where the end of the body part is, where the tail is. That's like how I like to do it, yeah. Um, so, and I'm, I've got 10 pound um, braid. Yep. So this, okay. is, this is a reel that I use for flathead. Um, and it's got a 10 pound fluoro leader. That tail that you've got on there. Yeah. The interesting thing about that tail is it's got all the ribs in it. Mm. You know why they do that? No. Because, you know that S-factor scent? Yeah. It goes in there and hangs on. Oh, That's gotcha. what they're all about. They're not as strong as the solid tails, the, the grubs, but because they've got the flutes in them, it holds all of that paste that comes out of your S-factor tube, the scent, mm. and it stays on longer. Ah, okay. That's what they're for. Now, Loza, I like the look of that little cor corner there. Yep. So, I'm going to just try in this little corner spot here. Yep. Then I might go over there and flick it onto that little sandbar. I'm just going to pop, just bounce it around a little bit. Yes. See if I can catch something. I figure that, I think, obviously Brim would take that. Yeah. You, you've got whiting on them, haven't you? Uh, yeah, Tony gets a lot of whiting on that, but he uses a much smaller jig head, obviously. Yeah. And you almost need to skim it across the surface and... Okay. But, oh, well, see, there we go. Yeah. There's whiting there, you never know. Yeah. Now, if you can keep your eye on that other rod, I have an idea. This little trough starts just here and the current's washing that way up. I'm going to go and grab two or three pilchards. I'm going to get, walk into the corner where this little current starts and I'm going to mush them up so the scent just drifts out through here. I'm just going to do that before I start chucking this soft plastic because if there's any brim, they would love that. The gutter that Laurie and I are fishing in is just along here and it starts right here. It's kind of like a little bit of a V, a v shape here. And the water from these waves is washing that way. So I'm gonna mush these pilchards in the water here. I'm gonna just really mush them up so all the blood and everything comes out. And that will get carried along this edge where I'd like to fish. So I think if there's any brim out there, this will certainly get them excited. I'm only, only going to use three pilchards. I'm just going to walk in here and scrunch them up. Because the current is heading down that way. When I threw those pilchards in then, all that mushed up pilchard, it's already getting carried down through there. They have a lovely scent. So now I've put that in there, I'm going to start flicking this plastic out there. Just going to walk back this way a bit. We'll see how far we can cast with it actually. Just give it a nice little flick. Okay, well that's pretty good. I landed on the sandbar. So really I'm just planning on bouncing it over the edge into that little trough. I want it to stay on the bottom and I'm just going to flick it and bounce it across the bottom a little bit. I think Laurie's got a fish. Uh. A winter dart, quite a good size for down here. Um, too many bones for me. 
However, nice fish. I'm actually getting out a long way with this quarter ounce jig head and the 10 pound braid. It's amazing, I can cast a really good distance, certainly getting out plenty far enough so that I can cover some ground to get a fish. I haven't had a hit yet. I've had maybe seven casts at this point. I may change to a different color plastic in a minute, but certainly this size jig head is, it's great for casting and you do have the current and the waves, so it helps. And I'm really only planning just to bounce it along the bottom, just hop it along the bottom. So it's, it's perfect. And with a light whippy rod, you can flick it out a long way. Come on, Mr. Fish. I was saying to Laurie, you know, winter time's a great, winter time's a great time to fish. It's really beautiful and you don't get many people. I mean, I'm in, I'm in the middle of Sydney on a Saturday afternoon and the beach is almost empty. I'm changing colours, putting this plastic on. I'm just putting this wriggler. Gonna give that a go. I had a, um, I had about maybe a dozen casts or so with the watermelon colour. And now I'm going to try this. Just going to go for a wander down the beach a little bit. If you see any gear that you're interested in, you can always check it out at my website, rogersfishing.com, on my gear and resources page. And there'll be a link in the description. Oh, it's, it's pulling some line. Might be a salmon. What do you reckon, Laurie? I don't know, but I think this could be a stingray. What is it? Yep. Ah. That's losing points. <laughs> okay. These guys have got a dangerous tail. Here. See that? They got a, they got a, a nice big spike on their tail right there. You can see it. So, and they're very good at flicking up. So what you've got to do to get your hook out or cut the line, whatever, you've got to turn him over. Then you can go like that. Then he can't come back the other way with his, with his uh, tail and get you. So I think the best thing to do here is just snap that and throw him back in. That's how you get rid of him. The rod that I've been using off the beach with my soft plastics really for the last couple of weeks. It's actually a squidding rod. This is the actual rod itself. I just grabbed it because of its length. I mean, I use this for catching squid off the rocks, but it's not nine foot long. It's relatively stiff, but it's really whippy. It's actually fantastic for flicking plastics out quite a long way. You know, when I'm using this light 10 pound braid that just the length of it and the whippiness of it, it's been, I actually really like it, even though it's not a, a dedicated soft plastic rod, it works really well. And I like to get a nice bit of a flick into the cast, it just really helps to propel the plastics out. And I can get good distance with relatively light jig heads off the beach. I've been fishing with the plastics for about the last half an hour, and I've tried two different colors. This is the second color I've tried. I have caught brim, Taylor and salmon on this. Over the last couple of weeks where I've been playing around with the plastics, I've caught flathead, brim, salmon, Taylor. Yeah, four species so far on the plastics. Uh, today we've caught seven fish on worms plus a stingray. So after half an hour of doing this, I'm going to actually go back to bait because I've given it a good go in a few different places, haven't had a single whack. So I think I'd just like to get a couple more fish so Laurie's got a really good feed. And um, I'm actually going to try my mixed grill. 
I'm going to take the worm bait off the bottom and put a half pilchard bait on the bottom because I think it's a great time of the afternoon to put a bit of pilly out there. So I'm going to have a worm bait on the top and a half pilchard on the bottom. So I'll just switch over to that now and fish for another half an hour or so or till just on dark and it's been a great session. So I've just switched over to the good old mixed grill. I love a mixed grill with, um, I call it a mixed grill, Laurie. <laughs> it's kind of like a smorgasbord for the fish. Should do it. Let's see if anything wants that pilchard. Well, the smell of the pilly will certainly attract something. It, this, um, it's really filled up, the water's really filled it up now, hasn't it? It has. Like there's no waves breaking out there that where they're breaking at low tide. No. Look, if you'd see anything darting across the surface, if there was something. I had a couple it's pretty of throws. glassy. Yeah, I had a couple of throws with a spin before. I can get out a long way. You can see it land, but there's nothing to aim at at this point. Yeah, yeah. So if you see anything break the surface, let me know if I'm more than likely to be able to reach it. You know, it's interesting, Laurie, in the last month or so, fishing down south, I've had a lot of success at low tide. You know, the gutters are a lot more defined. To find. Yep. And I've been fishing during the middle of the day off the beach, like midday. Yeah. I fished one afternoon, I got five brim. Plus other species as well. Yeah, right. During the middle of the day. So, I, it, I don't know, it may be better. It may, I mean, we have plenty of bites at low tide. It may be, you know, I, know she's still, I think we still catch fish now, but hang on, I'm getting a, is that a bite? I've actually had a couple of solo hits, like, bang, and that's it. Okay. I thought, what would do that? I don't like solo hits. Uh, the, uh, One hit wonders, mate. Yeah. See, when the tide was low, Laurie, we could very clearly see where the deep bit was, the shallow bit oh, was. Oh, yes. Yeah. But yeah. now it just... Not full blending. Mm. We know it's there, and we're still in the sweet spot, so... Yeah, well, we're bang in the middle of it. So, Laurie, what do you reckon? What, what do you reckon the result is today? Oh, it's pretty reasonable. There's, we landed, what, seven or eight fish, maybe more. We threw a fair few back, kept a few. So, nothing on the soft plastics. However, don't give up. The soft plastics do work. Maybe they don't like the calm ocean. Who knows? Maybe they like it a bit more churned up. However... Yeah. Persist with them because they do work. Yeah. We've done well on the baits today. So it was it was great to see the whiting here, hey Laurie, in winter. That's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. Some nice whiting. One of them was, oh, I don't know, maybe 38 centimetres. It's good size. Yeah. For the middle of winter, it's great. And also, we got here, we started fishing at maybe about 2.30. And it was about, that would have been, that was two hours after low tide. And we were getting bites pretty much straight away, weren't we, Laurie? But yeah, heavy bait. We're going to knock off now before, before dark. We're taking home half a dozen fish, so we've had a great time down here. Um, we, could, we could stay here, we'd probably get a couple more. But it definitely seems a little bit quieter now. So I hope this video has been helpful. Uh, you've learned a few things. As Laurie mentioned, don't give up on the soft plastics. It's funny because I've found I'll go down to one beach fish with plastics and have a lot of success I might go to another beach like today I gave it maybe 30 40 minutes with a couple of different plastics casting into some good-looking water but I didn't get a, sing a single hit so that's why I switched back over to bait so I'll be seeing you next Saturday when we come up with another video